Good afternoon, everyone. Now we will start the fifth lecture of uh, Professor Dongwan Young from Busan National University. Today, he will teach black hole complementary controversy and firewall conjecture. Please welcome him. Okay, thank you very much and good afternoon. Mm, uh, yesterday, I um, discussed about um, uh, information theory, uh, quantum information theory, and uh, I summarized several important topics about the uh, page curve and Hayden Preskill protocol. Uh, so, if you remember some topics, then um, after I discuss Hayden Preskill protocol, I uh, discuss why uh, several very well known uh, principles are inconsistent with each other, including uh, quantum mechanics, unitarity, and uh, local activity and general relativity and so on, entropy and something and, and so on. So why such a very well established and well known principles are inconsistent and uh, based on the quantum information theory, uh, we can very easily, um, in, in, indeed, it, it, it's not uh, very difficult to understand. So I provided uh, three alternative point of view. Uh, one was um, about the particle um, cubic model and based on such a particle and particle pairs and such a uh, finite degree of systems, uh, we can uh, explain why uh, it is very difficult to explain the information loss paradox. And um, so basic um, principles, physics is the same, but um, AMPS presented the paradox using the, int uh, the entanglement entropy uh, relations. And uh, finally, I provided uh, the explanation from uh, in terms of the um, monogamy of maximal entanglement. So, um, uh, so all of them uh, present the same physics, but um, um, presented by a different way. So uh, the understanding of the information loss paradox is to reconcile the tensions between the principles and uh, reconcile the paradox um, made by um, arguments that, that I, I have shown. Mm. So uh, by keeping this in mind, um, let's um, focus on today's topic. So today uh, I will um, historically review what, uh, what was going on in, in the context of information loss paradox since uh, 1993. So uh, around the 1990s, uh, there was a very big development in black um, hole physics. Uh, so from the string inspired models, um, uh, by including the semi-classical uh, effect, one could uh, obtain the dynamics of the semi-classical black holes. Um, and um, we could obtain a very um, almost exact forms. For example, uh, I mentioned the CJHS model or the RST model. So um, uh, as we know, uh, such a um, semi-classical dynamics of black holes, uh, many people um, moved their um, in interest to the information loss paradox. And um, probably in my knowledge, of course, um, there was no definite answer uh, at the time, but uh, the, the uh, consensus, um, especially among uh, the string theorists, was uh, so-called the black hole complementarity principle. Uh, this was a very uh, leading paradigm, uh, which was proposed by Susskind. And before Susskind, there was a proposal by uh, Toft, uh, but but uh, I think uh, his uh, top, uh, proposal was not uh, very uh, accepted by many people. So a more famous paradigm was the Sosskind version of black hole complementarity. And then um, there were many, many uh, discussions, and um, but uh, eventually the paradigm uh, uh, breaks down around uh, uh, the late uh, 2010, um, around 2010 and plus minus several years. So um, uh, in uh, yesterday's uh, talk, I provided several um, arguments, uh, including AMPS. And today I will show one additional uh, argument. So uh, originally, uh, Soskin and Thorash has proposed the Kedankin experiment that um, shows the consistency of black hole complementarity. But today I will show that uh, indeed such a Kedankin experiment is indeed uh, inconsistent. We can uh, reveal the inconsistency within the semi-classical framework. So anyway, if we, um, if we can agree that the original version of black hole complementarity is not sufficient, then uh, what can be the alternatives? 
So then uh, this means that uh, the assumptions of the critical complementarity, one of the assumptions of the critical complementarity must be modified. So uh, the important question is who is wrong? Or maybe it's a pattern to say what is wrong. <laughs> so who is wrong or what is wrong? <laughs> so I may ask this question. And um, uh, I think there are, we can categorize by five um, contents. So uh, information loss. Or, of course, there are more um, different opinions, but I think uh, I, I will select the very important um, uh, frameworks. One is the firewall conjecture. The other is ER repair conjecture and critical remnant picture. But today I will not discuss details and I will postpone tomorrow's discussion. And finally, um, this um, effective loss of information picture uh, is, um, um, so I, I draw this white uh, line here because I like this idea. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, this is my prejudice. So uh, maybe it, whether you will agree or disagree, it's, it's up to you. So um, uh, today, for today's discussion, um, I think uh, very highly um, biased. So I will provide you my uh, highly biased opinion. So if you um, don't agree for some interpretations, then that's okay. So uh, maybe I will, I will also happy to listen your um, criticisms or the other um, yeah, um, opinions. But, but I, I believe that uh, such a debating. So even though um, my interpretation is a kind of garbage idea, but, but such a debating and struggles will help you to understand the deeper um, meaning of um, various ideas. So um, I bravely um, provide my prejudice and opinions. Um, so, okay, <laughs> yeah, but please don't <laughs> worry about too much. <laughs> please don't worry too much. So, uh, Let's start from the black hole complementarity principle that was proposed by Soskin and Dorales in 1993. Uh, this is a very famous paper. So the title is The Stretched Horizon and Black Hole Complementarity. Uh, the question is what is the stretched horizon? And um, in, uh, the, in my third lecture, I um, discussed many kind of horizons. Um, I mean, uh, event horizon, Cauchy horizon, or whatever, apparent horizon, and 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 then isolated horizon, taping horizon, and so on. But um, I never um, um, explained the definition of the stretched horizon because uh, I think the stretched horizon is not a very good physical concept. So stretched horizon is only uh, useful for a very big and classical black holes. So very big and classical black holes, uh, the stretched horizon can be useful. So that. So that is related to the uh, Kipson's membrane paradigm. But the, the original membrane paradigm was very classical limit. It's about the very uh, classical and astrophysical black holes. If black holes are very big and the perturbations are very small, then we can regard the horizon as a, um, a kind of membrane. But um, so I can accept here that idea, but applied for the evaporating black holes, which is a genuinely a quantum. Then uh, it's, um, it's, we can assure whether the stretch horizon can be really applied to the, the um, uh, real dynamical black holes, quantum black holes or not. But, but anyway, at the time, uh, he introduced that uh, notion. So in terms of the asymptotic observer, um, uh, all informations are attached to the apparent horizon. So, uh, no, no, I mean stretch the horizon um, because um, it takes infinite time to pass the event horizon. So, so all the information are attached at the stretched horizon. And the stretched horizon subordinates all the information and emits by the hooking mediation. So in terms of the asymptotic observer, everything is causal and everything is consistent. And uh, in terms of the infilling observer, he will not see such a membrane like near the horizon, but um, he will satisfy the general relativity and he will carry his own information under the singularity. So may maybe we can distinguish the two different observers. So one is at the asymptotic uh, observer and the other is the infilling observer. So let's go more details. So um, uh, let's assume all the following natural well-established laws. The unitarity, local quantum field theory for the asymptotic observers and general relativity for the infilling observer. And the package of king entropy is the Boltzmann entropy. And there is an observer who can uh, read information and distinguish information from the Hawking radiation. 
So, so if we assume the all um, assumptions, then what is the paradox? Um, so then first, the asymptotic observer measures Hawking radiation, and it must be unitary. So uh, if the star collapsed, then uh, from the Hawking radiation, one can uh, distinguish the um, information of the collapsed matter. So it must be unitary and information is preserved. Second, the free-falling observer measures uh, almost no Hawking radiation. It's uh, well known because uh, if uh, well, an observer free falls, then effectively uh, there's no effective gravity and then um, he will pass the event horizon uh, without any, any big quantum effect and uh, he will touch the singularity. So at the singularity, of course, a GR must break down, but before the singularity, uh, if all curvatures are way smaller than the Planck scale, then general relativity must be a very good description. So matter of no smoking radiation carries all information and GR is satisfied until the singularity. So uh, both are okay. So asymptotic observer, it seems so. And for the free falling observer also, it seems so. Uh, however, if you compare uh, them uh, at the same time, then it seems very strange. Uh, therefore, information must be duplicated where one copy is at infinity at, um, at uh, the outside and the other copy is library inside the black hole. So of course, um, uh, this is very too, too much naive interpretation. There may be many loopholes, but um, the loophole means that um, uh, we need to modify some, some principles that I uh, mentioned. Uh, but uh, uh, the original um, idea of Susskind uh, was to say that uh, we need to keep all the already established assumptions, unitarity and local activity and general relativity and so on. All of them are very, very established and very well confirmed by the experiments. So um, the most conservative way probably uh, is to believe every principles. Then, uh, as I mentioned, um, it seems that there is the information duplication, which is not allowed in quantum mechanics. Uh, so there is uh, the no cloning theory. So information cannot be duplicated, but um, it's important observation is that uh, if there is no witness, then uh, the nature is uh, no guilty. The nature is innocent. So if nobody nobody um, see the result, then there, it doesn't happen. Uh, the, the basic um, philosophy is something like this. So um, uh, there is a very famous word, fam famous word, uh, when you have eliminated all that is impossible, whatever remains must be the truth, no matter how improbable. So do you know who said this? Uh, <laughs> yeah, this was said, uh, so this uh, famous word was uh, said by the Sherlock Holmes, the famous detective. So uh, the detective said that if you el eliminated all impossible things, then the remain is um, whatever, improbable, whatever, um, so, um, no matter how improbable, it must be the truth. So uh, Saskin eliminated all uh, impossible things. So he kept all all physical laws, and then uh, the only logical possibility is that there must be a no observer who compare between the infilling observer and the asymptotic observer. Then maybe we can keep all the uh, physical laws, including unitarity and GR and QFT and so on. This was his um, uh, philosophical point of view uh, about the information paradox, and uh, which was uh, well. Uh, explained in this famous uh, popular science book, The Black Hole War. Uh, the, the title is very interesting. So it's uh, his battle with uh, Stephen Hawking to make the world safe for quantum mechanics. So uh, in some sense, he saved the world. Uh, he saved the quantum world uh, from the um, uh, devil Stephen Hawking, in some sense. <laughs> I may <laughs> interpret <laughs> this way, but it's a joking. So, uh, so more details what uh, the uh, black hole complementarity say is that um, before we say black hole complementarity, we need to uh, mention about the complementarity. Indeed, uh, the, the complementarity in quantum mechanics um, is about the wave and particle duality. So uh, complementarity of wave and particle means that uh, although the wave property and the particle property of quantum mechanics look inconsistent, so you know, particle is particle and wave is wave. 
So they are inconsistent, basically. Uh, look inconsistent, but in the nature, uh, two properties do not appear at the same time. So uh, basically, um, all uh, objects are wave, wave, so metal wave, but if you measure, then you will see the, the particles. So uh, if when you see the particles, uh, you never see wave. And uh, if it, uh, the object has a uh, wave property, then it is no more than the particle. So uh, two properties do not appear at the same time, and hence uh, two properties can coexist. That is the meaning of the complementarity. So uh, when there is an um, um, uh, inconsistent object, inconsistent properties, but uh, if they uh, coexist, uh, because there is no observer who see both of them at the same time, then um, well, they, they, the two inconsistent properties can coexist in the nature. That is the um, name of uh, complementarity. So like this, uh, black hole complementarity says that although the asymptotic observer and the free filling observer look inconsistent, so surely it's inconsistent because information seems to be duplicated. However, uh, if two observers cannot share their observations, if so they are completely uh, separated and if they uh, cannot communicate uh, uh, each other, then um, the five natural laws can be true for all observers. So, uh, you know, we may say that um, uh, there are asymptotic observers and um, inferring observers. And there may be third observers, but if there is no such a third observer, then uh, for each observer, all the five natural laws are, are consistent. So by this way, um, he wanted to explain um, the, the principles of nature consistently. So it, it, it is a kind of interpretation. Then uh, you may ask uh, whether uh, this, maybe this looks um, sound, maybe this looks very interesting, but uh, you may ask whether uh, this is indeed um, consistent or not. So in order to check the consistency of the uh, hole complementarity idea, so this means that uh, in order to confirm, in order to check whether there is an um, observer who see the duplication of the information, uh, there were several um, uh, Gedanken experiments involving the black holes. So in this um, paper one year later by Sosskind and Thurasios, they provided several uh, Gedanken experiments. And I think um, I, I will today uh, uh, show the, the, the idea, idea of the, the most important Gedanken experiment involving uh, black holes. So uh, in this paper, the Sosskind said that um, uh, original idea was um, introduced by John Preskin, the famous uh, uh, theorist, and also he's very uh, good at the information theory. So um, he, uh, the problem was uh, proposed by Preskin and resolved by himself, uh, but <laughs> himself, but uh, in this Oscillatory paper, uh, they uh, reported uh, in the, the well-established uh, form. So uh, let me uh, provide uh, let me say the details. So here is the geometry, and let's assume that this is the sparsest black room. So yellow curve is the singularity, and this white curve is the event horizon. But, but uh, just for convenience, I just uh, draw the, uh, the white hole region. But, but of course, uh, this part is usually unphysical, say, inside the sky interior. Uh, and uh, at this moment, um, I send a bit of information uh, to the black room. So I will send a Bit of information to the black hole. And then, um, then, then if you believe the GR, then this information will can propagate freely uh, and eventually should touch it, the some part of the singularity. And then um, uh, for the asymptotic observer, as um, uh, black hole complementarity says, um, uh, Hawking radiation should uh, emit uh, this information. So I don't know how to distinguish the information. So in order to um, uh, distinguish whether this information is about that particle. Um, of course, we need to prepare more setup, but in principle, we can do it. So, uh, in principle, at, at some moment, uh, hooking radiation outside the event horizon should carry the information, and this must be the information about the incoming um, particle. So then, uh, if you uh, send it to such um, um, a certain hypersurface that includes inside and outside the horizon. Then you will see that there, so there is a crossing point. So uh, for this um, hypersurface, uh, information seems to be duplicated. 
However, um, the assertion of the black hole complementary team says that um, it is uh, impossible to see both of them at the same time. So, um, but uh, maybe you may imagine that there is a, such an um, observer, very QT observer, and uh, this observer first approaches the black hole and measures the information from the Hawking radiation and gravely falls into the black hole. So if this observer uh, touches the singularity, then, then of course it fails. But uh, before this guy touched the singularity, if fortunately this information was scattered to the outgoing direction, then uh, causally it is not impossible that uh, this observer can see the both of information, I, I mean the duplicated information. So uh, if th there is such an uh, uh, observer who uh, can, who communicate between asymptotic observer and involume observer, then there's no sharp uh, separation between two observers. And then uh, he can see the information duplication. Of course, uh, this guy will, will, will die soon after he noticed that. Um, so soon after he noticed the information duplication, he will die eventually. However, uh, it is very uh, inconsistent. And at once, uh, there exists a semi-classical observer who see the violation of natural laws, then uh, already it violates the assumptions of the black complementarity. So um, if there is such an observer, then it is very problematic. However, uh, from the causal structure, what you can uh, say is this. So um, when you can distinguish the information from the Hawking radiation, and uh, the answer is uh, there are two time scales. Uh, one is the page time, which is order of m cube. Uh, yesterday I mentioned, and the other time scale is um, so called the scrambling time, uh, according to the Hayden Prescott protocol. And in the time scale is m log m. So uh, if you consider about the page time, then uh, this, uh, uh, this white observer uh, should uh, wait outside the black hole until the, uh, the time scale m cube. And after m cube, uh, this guy will. Um, uh, enter the black hole and very quickly uh, touch the singularity. So in order to send a signal uh, before this guy touched the singularity, um, the original uh, star, I mean the information in the star uh, collapse, uh, collapsed matter, should send the signal uh, between the time scale delta t. So uh, in, uh, on this uh, uh, ge geometrical background, by using the coordinate um, uh, differences, I mean, uh, you need to introduce the cruise car coordinate and you estimate the cruise car time for that condition, which is uh, known to be delta t. Then uh, you can very easily say that uh, this delta t is um, order of uh, exponential minus m square. So m is a very big number for semi crystal black holes. I mean, it's more than order one. So one is the Planck scale and it must be greater than order one. So delta t is way smaller than the Planck time. And then this means that, um, you know, uh, if one, uh, send, one needs to send a bit of information, uh, one needs to satisfy the, uh, the, the uncertainty relation. So uh, if delta t is this uh, short time, then delta e, uh, so necessary energy to send a, a bit of information, uh, is its inverse value, exponential plus m square. Then um, in order to send the information uh, between delta t, the necessary energy is exponential m square, but the black hole energy itself is m. So the necessary energy to send the information for the duplication is extremely huge. So in general, exponential m square is way uh, much, 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 much greater than uh, that of uh, the black hole energy. So uh, it is impossible in terms of the, the energy conservation. So um, this is the way that um, uh, why such a thing is impossible. And uh, uh, so I, I mentioned that there's one more time scale, which is known to be uh, um, uh, uh, the scrambling time. So what happens in terms of the scrambling time? Then in terms of the scrambling time, delta t is exponential minus m log m over m. So, so this uh, this m is the, the horizon scale, and this m log m is the time scale. So, if you uh, um, um, evaluate this, then this is approximately uh, one over m. And then uh, um, 
from the uncertainty relation require the energy is m. Then you can notice that, uh, you know, um, the consistency bound is whether this delta E is uh, smaller than m or not, but, uh, you know, this uh, inequality is satisfied. So, you know, in the uncertainty relation, delta S delta P is uh, greater or equal than the H over two, H bar over two. So, uh, so uh, you may find an example that it is it can be saturated, but it cannot be smaller than the boundary. Something like this, uh, the scrambling time is the marginal time for the consistency of the black hole complementarity. So, so at the time, many people thought that uh, even though we, there is a shorter time scale for the scrambling time, but still the black hole complementarity is consistent, and such a uh, scrambling time is a kind of marginal time scale. Uh, so um, for the for the consistency check. So so in this sense, it, it seems that um, black hole complementarity seems very consistent. So I took this photo, uh, this figure from um, the um, uh, Sosky paper. So in order to exist such a duplication observer, one needs to more energy than the black hole mass itself. So it is impossible, and hence it was believed that uh, black hole complementarity is inconsistent. And uh, uh, it was very, very complementarity is, is consistent and indeed such a consistent condition is margin, marginally satisfied uh, at the uh, scrambling time scale. So this was a, a common belief uh, until the end of uh, 2010. Mm. However, um, um, let me introduce my um, uh, paper <laughs> in 2011. And um, in this paper, I um, construct an example that uh, so we can, so I, I said that um, we can construct a semi classical model that violates the black hole complementarity. So uh, let me introduce uh, this, um, I, this paper. So indeed, this paper uh, appeared before AMDs. So I think, um, I believe uh, this is the first um, uh, consistent um, um, criticism about the black hole complementarity. So uh, the, uh, I introduced the, the notion of Rajan scaling, uh, but I think it's not that uh, difficult notion. So uh, let me uh, very briefly, uh, physical, physical intuition why black hole complementarity can be inconsistent. So uh, this is the causal structure of black holes. And here is the space like a singularity, and this yellow curve is the apparent horizon. And of course, you can draw the event horizon as a null line. So this is nothing but the causal structure of the black holes. Uh, and uh, you may estimate the um, length scales. So this length scale is the, the spatial size, which is order of uh, m, because you know in Schwarzschild black holes, uh, the, the black hole size is two m. So, so spatial size is approximately um, m, and the temporal size is also finite, and the temporal size is the lifetime scale, so m cube. So this is the spatial and uh, um, temp uh, spatial and temporal size of the evaporating black holes. <laughs> However, there is one hidden assumption, which is that uh, what we assume is the, that uh, there is only one um, scalar field uh, that or, or whatever scalar field or graviton or whatever uh, there is a single matter field that contribute to the Hawking radiation. However, if you include many uh, species of the uh, the metal fields, then Hawking radi radiation must be stronger and stronger and stronger. So, for example, if you imagine um, the number of species are 10 to um, 6, maybe, maybe it's a very um, um, unrealistic, but let's assume such a very big number. Then what will happen? That is my question. And then uh, the spatial size must be the same. Because if you prepare, if you uh, prepare the same initial condition with mass m, then maybe the spatial size must be the same, but the temporal size must be um, must be shorter uh, than uh, the original one. So uh, usually it's very well known that, that um, if you have n species, then the, the lifetime decreases by factor n. So uh, it becomes shorter, n cube divided by n, and then the causal structure must be highly modified, something like this. Then, uh, you know, um, so th there may be a, um, some attempts to say that um, by introducing such a very large number of the scalar fields, one may uh, find some inconsistent condition of the black hole complementarity. For example, you know, uh, the delta E is um, exponentially uh, plus um, R0 over uh, tau, which is the um, 
page time and uh, which is um, n m cube divided by m approximately and then exponential it goes exponential n m square therefore um if it is greater than so n m then it is uh, consistent but uh, you know if you choose m square n uh, way smaller than one then um, maybe this inequality may break down and you may say that black complementarity can be inconsistent. Uh, however, uh, if you just the library of some m squared divided n way smaller than one, then it is no more semi-classical because um, the, the classical collapsing time scale, classical time scale is uh, order m because if you consider the collapse of the null shell, then it takes almost the time order of m. And you know, the evaporating time scale is m cube lifetime. Therefore, the, if you compare the uh, uh, m cube divided by, by n, therefore, uh, if you compare evolution time scale and uh, classical time scale, usually for the semi classical cases, uh, this must be um, much, much. Um, less than one because uh, the, the evaporation must be way, way, way uh, slower uh, compared to the classical time scales. But uh, this uh, becomes uh, evaporation time scales n over m cube and uh, divided by n. So this becomes m square over n. And as I said, uh, we also know this one. So you can see that this is inconsistent. <laughs> So um, this condition is the uh, semi-classicality condition. Uh, this condition is to uh, violate black hole complementarity. And then uh, you can say that um, if you naively add uh, the number of scalar field to, I mean, I mean many number of uh, letter field, then um, you, you may uh, say that black hole complementarity seems inconsistent, but at the same time, you must say that black hole level forms because uh, uh, black hole evaporate faster uh, before the black hole is formed, the black hole must evaporate. So uh, this violates the semi-classical condition. So this is the reason why uh, the naive increase of the number of species um, doesn't say anything about the black hole complementarity. So this point was um, uh, discussed in Gia de Bali several years ago, the so black hole and large N species solution. So uh, if uh, there are too many uh, species, then um, indeed, um, um, so even though um, the mass of the black hole is greater than the Planck scale, uh, but uh, it cannot uh, be the semi-classical black holes. So um, in the semi-classical limit, uh, the black hole size must be greater than the square root n. So m must be greater than the square root n. I, I omit all the all the uh, dimensional pure quantities. So. Um, um, so for the semi-classical black holes, it must be greater than n, or n m square divided by n must be uh, greater than one. This is the se correct semi-classical condition. Um, and uh, and 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 then um, um, because of this, in this paper, he uh, introduced uh, some comments that you know the the mass cutoff is related to this capital n. I mean, n p square is related to n and some something. So, so uh, uh, this possibility was already uh, discussed and it is nothing to do with the black hole complementary field. Uh, so in order to preserve the semi-classical causal structures, but in order to uh, violate the duplication experiment and black hole complementarity uh, uh, principles, uh, my idea was to um, scale the black hole. So even though n is very big, if the black hole size is uh, scaled again, then uh, maybe it's, it's a different story. So um, um, in terms of the Planck units, if you compare this black hole and this black hole, then uh, this black hole is way bigger because n is a very big number. However, if you uh, parameterize this um, spatial size by square root nm, then uh, the temporal size becomes uh, square root nm cube divided by n, which is square root nm cube. So interestingly, if you compare the left figure and right figure, then um, uh, it is just uh, nothing but conformally stretched. So the conformal shape is the same, but um, just uh, the uh, physical size is stretched in some way. 
So by using this scaling, um, scaling, you can um, uh, stretch the space time. I mean, this is nothing but the choice of the unique lengths. Uh, and if the unique lengths become smaller and smaller by increasing n, uh, by keeping this um, relative size, then uh, this black hole, uh, this black hole is definitely semi-classical. However, the physical size becomes different. So, um, if you say the physical size of this, then the physical size of uh, the right one is really uh, way bigger. Then, um, if uh, for the left case, if uh, the time scale is delta t to send the signal to the second observer. Then um, this delta t must be also stretched with the same factor square root n. So physically, delta t is stretched by this uh, rescaling, and then we obtain this relation. So originally, delta t was um, thought that it's an exponential minus tau over m. Tau is the, um, the time scale of the evaporation, which is phase time, and m is the size of the spatial size of the black hole. So um, the ratio, uh, so, so anyway, we obtain this one, but uh, you know, if you, you introduce the scaling, then um, the ratio between tau and m is the same as uh, the case of n equals one, because the, there is the same vector. So this is a, con a constant, but uh, overall um, length scale is stretched by square root n. So the, the, I mean, the, the physical uh, time scale is stretched. And then if you introduce the uncertainty relation, then the energy, necessary energy, is also uh, decreases by one over square root n factor. This is the important point. So uh, if you consider the phase time, then time scale is m cubed, and uh, the uh, necessary time is the square root n and something, so exponential minus m squared. So necessary energy is one over square root n and exponential tau over m. And then um, the consistency condition is that delta e is greater than square root nm. So here square root n appears because black hole size increases. And then um, by practicing everything, then you will obtain this relation. So if this inequality is satisfied, then black hole complementarity is consistent. But if you provide a very big number of n, then this inequality is flipped. So still, it's within the semi crystal regime, but this inequality breaks down and then um, um, it is really, it becomes really possible to uh, do such a um, duplication experiment. However, you may criticize that, uh, you know, uh, in order to flip this uh, in direction of the inequality, uh, you may need exponentially large number of uh, scalar fields. And, uh, you know, this may not be excluded in principle, but um, it is very unnatural. So if it's not allowed in, from the fundamental physics, then maybe this mechanism doesn't work. However, so if you compare with the scrambling time, then, and uh, if you provide the same um, analysis of the scaling behavior, then eventually you will obtain this kind of relation. So it's not surprising because if you, you assume n equals one, uh, then um, m, m greater than, greater or equal to m. This is the, so I mean, the scrambling time was the marginal condition for the black uh, complementarity. But by introducing this scaling behavior, uh, it easily, flips the direction of the inequality. So, so it's not surprising that there are a square root n factor. So uh, this means that um, people overlooked the, the number of species issue. Uh, so um, if you have a reasonable number of species, which is more than n, uh, I mean, uh, more than one, so saying order 10 or order 100 number of species, then uh, it's very probable that the scram and within the scrambling time, the duplication uh, information—I mean, duplication of information—and can be observed by assuming uh, the assumptions of the black hole complementarity. So uh, I think uh, this provides the counter examples of the uh, black hole complementarity, and uh, so it is very reasonable to conclude that there is no sharp separation between the asymptotic observer and inferring observer. So um, especially for the GR community, I think. Um, Everybody knows about this. So in principle, you must not distinguish the asymptotic observer and inferring observer. Um, and, and indeed, uh, I think this must be the true. So uh, therefore, uh, the original five natural rules are um, inconsistent. Maybe we can also conclude that way. So um, uh, after this discussion, maybe we can uh, remind the 
a very famous paper. Um, I'll, I'll maybe mark it in the story. If you see the uh, title, then uh, this is asking whether complementarity or the alternative idea, firewalls. So in this paper, uh, again, they attack the black hole complementarity principles and uh, reveals the inconsistency between the five assumptions. So uh, there are many versions to show the inconsistency of five assumptions. And uh, what I uh, said is somehow the semi-classical description of the, the, the um, inconsistency. So I think that this is, I mean, uh, large and scaling argument is also uh, a kind of uh, alternative idea to uh, interpret the record complementarity and so on. Uh, okay. So uh, the important lesson from black hole complementarity. So even though uh, the original version of complementarity fails, but I think um, from the failure of the black hole complementarity, I believe we have learned uh, lots of things. So uh, I think the important lesson from black hole complementarity is that there is no um, dual description between the involving observer and the asymptotic observer. So if uh, it is a dual description, then uh, there are two pictures, but uh, two pictures cannot coexist at the same time. So uh, in one picture, one describes this way. In the other picture, it's described that way. And two pictures are consistent mathematically. But they, these two pictures must not coexist in the same, um, in the same uh, space or quantum state. So uh, black hole complementarity means that, uh, so, I mean, the failure of black hole complementarity is that uh, there is no dual description between the infoling and our synthetic observer. I think this is a very important point. So uh, probably the, the, the idea of the stretch of the horizon was um, um, borrowed from uh, this, this book, uh, famous book by Kipson and Son Price uh, McDonald in this book. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this membrane paradigm is okay for the, the very classical black holes, but uh, it may be not the case for the um, for the uh, black hole, I mean, evaporating black holes. So um, there's no physical membrane uh, at the horizon. So there is definitely no membrane. Um, membrane. If there is a, um, maybe you may say differently. So uh, there may be a membrane and this the name must be the firewall. <laughs> maybe you may say it this way. But, um, and, um, and let's say in terms of uh, GR, um, there must be no membrane. Um, I, I'd like to say. Uh, or, or you may uh, you may choose you may modify some some the assumptions and you may say differently. So uh, this assertion so uh, is not um, uh, not complete. But um, let me uh, say that membrane or the brain picture is not sufficient. And this is also very famous the brain picture. The brain picture is very useful to evaluate the, the, the entropy of uh, several black hole models. So this is definitely true. And uh, and then um, based on this uh, deep brain picture, one may say that you know um, if uh, some uh, strings or whatever, let me say this is my uh, cup, and I cup I throw the cup into the black hole. Then uh, in in terms of a deep brain picture, this cup breaks down and uh, attaches at the at the deep brain. And there is no event horizon, and there is no singularity, and there is no loss of information in the deep brain picture. And at the same time, for the involving observer, there is a dual picture, dual description. So then in terms of the uh, dual, dual description, uh, the observer just falls in. So the, this my cup, um, without, without broke, uh, this cup, this cup falls into the black hole. So if there is a physical membrane, then uh, this cup should break completely. But if there is no membrane, then uh, this cup just uh, simply, I believe, falls into the black hole. And uh, these two pictures seem to be a uh, dual, each other. This was the uh, very famous uh, deep brain approach and picture. But uh, again, um, from the lesson of the uh, 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 black hole complementarity controversy, uh, we may say that maybe this picture is uh, fine for uh, some limits, including, um, I mean, uh, the extreme black holes. Maybe in the case it's okay, but for the evaporating and generic general black holes, um, maybe this is not sufficient. Um, I'm not saying this is completely wrong, but um, this picture must be extended or uh, one needs to add more ingredients. So um, seems uh, it's not uh, sufficient to explain the information of paradox. And um, uh, then how about the possible picture? So uh, 
so for the black hole case, there is event horizon and singularity, but in terms of the possible picture, the black hole um, tunnels to the super position of possibles. So there is no, so, so I mean, um, in my understanding, there is no unique solution of the possible, but the possible means there are very many kinds of possible solutions. So the superposition of possibles corresponds to the black holes. So if black hole tunnels to the possible state, then for each possible solution, there's no loss of information. And therefore, um, this experience the information loss paradox. Because for each possible solution, no event horizon, no singularity. Uh, so this is a very uh, fascinating idea, but um, then you may ask uh, what happens for the infilling observer. This is the infill problem. And, and then uh, I, in my understanding, there is no well-defined uh, explanation in terms of the possible picture. So if you superpose all the possible states, then uh, can it be the semi-classical black hole again? And um, uh, can there be any uh, communication between asymptotic observer and infilling observer? Uh, if uh, they can communicate each other, then um, the asymptotic observer uh, sees the possibles and the infilling observer measures the semi-classical black holes and their observations must be inconsistent. So I don't know, there may be other ways to explain this inconsistency, but um, I, I think maybe this is an interesting question and important uh, criticism about the possible picture. And um, this is nothing to do, this picture is nothing to do uh, with um, 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 physics, but um, I found a very so interesting, <laughs> um, cute picture. So uh, this, uh, even uh, this, uh, this is maybe Schrodinger's cat, and this cat says no possible, so, but, but this is a joke. So anyway, uh, so um, let me uh, remark several uh, implications to um, uh, cosmology. So um, after the, the black hole complementarity um, idea uh, developed, uh, several years later, uh, Saskin and his colleagues um, discussed about its extension to um, not only black holes, but also the digital space. So um, digital space and black holes, um, quasi structures are quite different, but a little bit similar because there is a horizon. So, but but for the black hole case, we are living outside the horizon. But uh, for the digital space, we are living inside the horizon. However, uh, very briefly, uh, uh, Soskin extended this idea to say that uh, even the unitarity is preserved inside the causal patch of the universe. So probably this is a very strong opinion, but um, this idea was known to be this complementarity. So black hole complementarity is extended to the version of the digital complementarity. So if uh, uh, every uh, physics uh, is consistent, I mean, uh, if uh, all the physics is unitary inside the causal patch of the digital space, then uh, this may provide the idea to the, um, uh, I mean, multiple uh, major problem. So this was, um, this idea was developed by Rafael Busso and Busso, Fry, Vogel, Yang, and, and their um, subsequent papers. So they in, in introduced the um, holographic measure and, um, or, or causal patch measure. So uh, the justification is based on the black hole complementarity. Um, if um, everything is unitary inside the causal patch, then um, and then um, we can just uh, define the measure only inside the causal patch. So um, if there is an eternal inflation, then universe ex exponentially expands, and there is no good way to uh, measure the volume of each slices. This is the major problem problem of the uh, multiverse. And but uh, if you uh, restrict your computation inside the causal patch then the space-time region is somehow well controlled. So you can provide a very nice uh, measure uh, for the multiverse. And maybe the, their astrophysical um, explanations and anthropic um, applications are very nice to explain the cosmic constant problem in the context of eternal inflation and uh, cosmic landscape. And so, uh, so this was a very uh, nice story. So from the black hole complementarity extends to DS complementarity and uh, eventually extend to the holographic measure. So experience the multiverse measure problem as well as the uh, fine tuning problem of the universe. I mean, including a cosmological constant problem and so on. This was a very nice story, but um, if we um, think we, if we lose the, the 
well, original motivation of black hole complementarity, then um, I think there is no uh, serious theoretical um, motivation to believe such a, um, such a holographic measure or causal patch measure, I think. Of course, maybe you can still uh, explain uh, some physics using that measure. Um, this is an independent idea of the black hole physics, but uh, I think the we lost a very serious theoretical uh, motivation about the holographic measure. In any case, now nowadays in string um, cosmology, um, now uh, not many people are discussing about the landscape, but many people are discussing about the swamp land. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know. Not many people nowadays. Not many people are discussing about the, the multiverse and eternal inflation. But maybe several years later, some people may have interest once again. But I'm not sure about that. So now, now uh, let's uh, go to the alternatives. So if your five assumptions are wrong, then who is wrong and or what is wrong? So I think uh, we can categorize five possibilities and uh, I will discuss um, case by case and, and I will just uh, show some important landmark ideas for each options. Um, of course, um, um, uh, it depends on my prejudice, seriously. So, um, okay. So the very first uh, option is the information loss. Uh, you can believe that there is information loss. If we inf information disappears, then it may be a very nice, easy answer <laughs> to the problem. Uh, so originally Hawking thought information lost, but later Hawking changed his opinion. However, still uh, in the world, there are several people who still believe seriously that information is lost. So uh, I, I took this photo from the presentation of uh, Roger Penrose. Uh, so this, uh, this world is uh, Roger Penrose. Uh, Roger Penrose provided several lectures and you know, wave function collapse is the resolution uh, of the tension between GR and quantum mechanics. So I mean, this is about the information loss paradox. And <laughs> maybe information loss is um, um, resolution of the tensions between GR and quantum mechanics. This is his opinion and, and um, so um, this is my private photo uh, when I uh, when I visited Poland. I, I could have an opportunity to uh, meet uh, Penrose and discuss about uh, the information loss paradox and so on. So uh, before I met, uh, I I privately discussed with Penrose. I uh, I I presented about some ideas of the information loss paradox, and and, and he commented that um, your paper. I, I mean your discussion was interesting, but I think information is lost. <laughs> so, so so and he explained these ideas, and uh, he is saying that um, in the world there are still there are five people who believe the information loss. So one is Penrose himself, and the other four are Bill Onlu and um, Robert Wald and Raphael Sorkin and Kipson. <laughs> These five guys are still <laughs> um, believe that uh, information is lost in the black holes. Mm. Um, yes, it's a, a little bit of joking, but um, still there are some uh, important people who uh, believe that um, uh, information is lost inside the black hole. Uh, however, no, what we need to mention is the, uh, this paper. Um, in the paper of 1984, um, I, I mean, uh, in this paper, uh, Banks, Suskin, and Peskin wrote uh, this paper. The, the title is Difficulties for the Evolution of Pure States into Mixed States. So if uh, there is a non-unitary evolution, then um, the conclusion is that um, uh, we are going to any more general uh, equation for rho violates either locality or energy momentum conservation. So their conclusion is that um, at once we accept the loss of unitarity, then um, energy momentum is not uh, conserved. So, so the universe becomes hotter and hotter and eventually uh, it becomes disaster. So um, we should not uh, accept that possibility. This was the um, paper of Pengstarskin and Peskin. And um, however, later, Arnu um, uh, and Wild wrote uh, this paper in 1995. Evolution rules taking pure states to mixed states in quantum field theory. So according to this paper, um, so uh, so it is argued that any evolution law taking pure states to mixed states in quantum field theory necessarily gives rise to 
violation of right of totality or environmental conservation. Uh, exactly this word comes from the Ben uh, Spetskin Soskin paper. However, uh, they, we show here that this is not the case by giving an example class of blah, blah, blah. So uh, in this paper, uh, they provided some discussions that indeed um, the Ben Spetskin Soskin paper um, was to was to um, somehow, in some sense, it was too naive, and there can be some possibility that uh, even though information is lost, um, there is some way to rescue the con everything, every conservation laws. So uh, there, I think that this is also very important to remark and um, also why. Uh, however, probably recently, many people are believing, um, so many people do not um, believe this uh, information loss, uh, loss idea because um, loss of information, especially inside the uh, ADS space, is inconsistent to uh, ADS safety. So, you know, everybody knows this uh, very, very, very famous paper. So um, from the ADS safety idea, uh, ADS physics is related to the uh, safety description and safety is manifestly unitary. Therefore, uh, black hole, even evaporation process must be uh, unitary. So we don't know how to take out information from the black hole. We don't know the exact mechanism, but um, at least we can sure that um, unitarity must be preserved. Um, that is, I think that is the common belief of uh, many people nowadays. But uh, let me mention that still there is a logical possibility and there are some um, debating whether the loss of information causes a very serious problem in the world or not. If it is not the case, then maybe um, information loss can be also a logical possibility. So if information really disappears, then uh, the relevant, relevant physical question is to ask how can or how should we effectively lose the information? So if information is lost and do not explain how can it uh, disappear, then this is not the physical explanation. If it is the physical explanation, then you must explain how how can or how should we uh, effectively lose the information so so i think this must be the physical um, uh, question uh, for the direction of the number one option okay let's go to the more um, popular and famous idea uh, that is uh, so of course um, i need to explain number two but um, due to the historical reason let me first uh, uh, consider the number three. So number three assumption was the general relativity. And if you believe a violation of GR, uh, of course, um, um, uh, general relativity was a well-established theory. So uh, violation means that violation inside the horizon. So if you assume the violation of the GR inside the horizon, uh, then uh, you may say that uh, in original complementary picture, uh, an astronaut um, falls into the black hole. But if there is a firewall and GR violates near the horizon, then uh, this astronaut will be, I don't know what will happen, but will, will um, be killed or will be died at the uh, firewall. So this is a stronger version of the membrane. So there is a very strong membrane. And um, so original deep brain picture or stage of the horizon picture is that um, the infilling observer sees nothing special, but uh, now in this strong version of the membrane and, or firewall picture, uh, there is no infilling observer. The observer, infilling observer will, uh, will um, break down near the horizon. And then there is no paradox. You can reconcile the tensions between the assumptions. And, and at that time, uh, AMPS, Almeri Marukhutinsky Sari, thought that the violation of the GR near the horizon is the most conservative idea. By conservative, uh, we mean that um, it's better not to change the quantum mechanics at the asymptotic space-time. So, um, so the only conservative way is to uh, modify inside the event horizon. Because uh, there is no, um, up to now, there is no observer who escapes from the <laughs> event horizon. So in that sense, this may be the uh, most um, conservative idea. And this surface is called by the fire. So firewall blocks you to enter the in inside the part of the uh, black holes. So uh, the firewall implies that uh, the Hawking pair is not separable. 
So um, if there is not, nothing special near the horizon, then um, particle and particle pair near the horizon must be a separable pair. However, if uh, there is a physical membrane or physical firewall near the uh, black hole uh, horizon, then, then um, particle and particle pair uh, is not necessarily be the, the separable pair. It can be causally entangled to uh, the black hole itself um, based on the local interactions. So the, the black hole, but so, so it's not separable from the black hole, but entangled with the black hole uh, from, or firewall from the beginning. And uh, this may um, resolve the tension uh, between the assumptions. However, you may ask this, so where is the place for the particle creation? So, uh, um, the, the, I mean, uh, the place of the firewall must be the place of the hooking radiation. Then where is the place of the hooking radiation or particle creation? So where is the firewall? This is the um, question. Uh, and two, in order to uh, understand the physics of the black hole e evaporation. And uh, then um, it's related to the Hawking's um, computation. So there are several uh, explanations of Hawking radiation. So um, I've met many experts to understand uh, the uh, Hawking radiation and about this question, where is the place of the Hawking radiation? Uh, Hawking, I mean, um, particle creation and um, there, there are several explanations. Uh, first derivation is by volume of transformation. Second approach is renormalized transformation from tensor approach. And the third one is particle tunneling picture. And about the question of, of the uh, location of the hooking radiation pair creation, uh, indeed three approaches say differently. <laughs> Very interestingly, um, three approaches say differently. So where is the point of, of the um, creation of particles and uh, about this question three approaches says uh, differently uh, in uh, volume of transformation picture the most important surface is, is the event horizon because event horizon separates causally separates between inside and outside so um, volume of transformation is the uh, transformation between past infinity and future infinity therefore the most important uh, horizon is the event horizon and Hawking radiation is related to the event horizon. That is the first point of view, volume of transformation. Um, in the second point of view, renormalized energy momentum tensor, uh, if you evaluate uh, the energy momentum tensor based on um, Davis Spring unknown formula, for example, then um, the incoming negative energy flux is generated way outside the event horizon, approximately 3m. So horizon is uh, over 2m, but uh, the incoming uh, negative energy flux is about 3m. Therefore, <laughs> Hawking radiation is generated near actual 3m. So then, the if the firewall grows up to 3m, then it is already naked, and it is already ruled out by the, uh, by the astrophysical um, observations. And the third possibility is the particle tunneling picture. And in the particle tunneling picture, uh, Hawking radiation is generated at the upfront horizon. Um, because event horizon is not physical, locally. So, uh, in, uh, so in terms of the particle tunneling, we need the quasi-local quasi horizon, and the quasi-local horizon is mm, the apparent horizon. So um, three uh, different uh, approaches uh, explain the origin of hooking radiation differently, but I think uh, these are, this is due to the different point of view. So in one picture, it's about the field level description, in the, in the other picture, it's about the expectation value description. And the third picture is about the particle level description. So it's a little bit different, but uh, we may uh, choose some alternative point of view. So uh, we, you may think that uh, firewalls can be either at the event horizon or uh, article 3M or upfront horizon. So you may take three possibilities together. <laughs> so first, uh, the simplest one is the uh, possibility two. If a um, firewall located near the 3M, then already um, the firewall must be naked and uh, should affect the future infinity. And um, this is surely violates the astrophysical observations. So this is impossible. If you uh, follow the possibility three, so if a uh, firewall grows up to the opponent horizon, uh, then um, the opponent horizon um, must be outside the event horizon. So as we discussed in my third uh, lecture, the, the event horizon located uh, outside the event horizon. I don't know, I mean, apparent horizon located outside the event horizon. Uh, 
and the distance between event horizon and upfront horizon uh, can be uh, um, larger than the Planck scale within the semi-classical regime. Uh, therefore, um, some effects uh, of the um, um, firewall can be naked uh, if you accept the possibility three. So this was uh, discussed in uh, this paper. And the question is if the firewall picks a consistent. And um, our uh, assertion was that um, uh, here, um, the firewall should be near the time like upfront horizon. Uh, time like means outside the event horizon. And uh, it should not affect the future infinity. But um, for some cases, it's impossible. So um, the, the upfront horizon can send a signal to the future infinity and can affect the, the future infinity. So in this sense, um, um, the, the, uh, the firewall can affect not only inside, but also outside the black holes. Maybe the most conservative idea is to say, say the possibility one. So um, if the event or if uh, the, the firewall grows up to the event horizon, uh, then maybe the firewall, um, so maybe inside the event horizon, but the problem is that where is the event horizon? Event horizon is not the, the quasi local notion, but it is uh, uh, the notion of the, uh, the, the global means. But, but um, firewall itself must be a physical object. Therefore, um, you may say that the firewall should grow up to the uh, putative event horizon. So if every process is the, uh, process is the, the, the uh, thermodynamic and adiabatic, then the, the um, um, horizon, I mean, I, I mean the firewall should grow up to the, the putative event horizon. And, um, but uh, if there exists a non-adiabatic fluctuation, then um, it violates the assumption of the adiabatic uh, condition. And, and then um, even though this probability is very low, if at once it exists, then uh, the firewall can be naked. So uh, I, I mean, what, um, so, uh, I said the firewall, then maybe it's a little bit difficult to accept, but the idea is very simple. So um, uh, based on this paper, um, and um, the idea is very simple. So um, there's a collapsing matter and this is the upfront horizon, and this is the so-called adiabatic horizon. So if there is no, no um, non-adiabatic radiation, then upfront horizon approaches to the adiabatic horizon, and the adiabatic horizon uh, becomes the event horizon. Uh, this is the putative event horizon. Uh, but if there is a non-adiabatic radiation, then this upfront horizon suddenly decreases to the small size. Therefore, the true event horizon uh, location uh, way inside the, the uh, putative uh, event horizon. And then, um, you know, we thought that after the phase time, the firewall grows up to the adiabatic uh, event horizon. Therefore, the true event horizon is way inside the uh, uh, adiabatic event horizon. And hence, some effects of the, the firewall must be naked by assuming the, the non-adiabatic fluctuations. So the price of the non-adiabatic fluctuation is the probability. So probabilistically highly suppressed, but um, there's no physical principle to disallow that possibility. So um, in principle, this can be allowed. So the original motivation of the firewall is to modify only inside the black hole. However, this seems to be in impossible. Based on several um, possibilities we checked and for almost all interpretations, um, the firewall must be naked. It is possible that the firewall can be naked. So, um, so I think that we already lost the very strong motivation of the origin firewall conjecture. It is no more the um, conservative idea. <laughs> it is a very radical idea that modifies not only inside, but also the outside of the course. Uh, unless there exists a persuasive mechanism to generate uh, the firewall. So, um, yeah, so this is my comment about the firewall picture, but if we, anyone can provide a mechanism to realize such a singular surface, then, then maybe that idea can be revived in coming um, days. And the second possibility is to modify the non-locality. I think th this is the most hot topic nowadays, because um, um, it seems that uh, this idea seems to be realized in the string uh, theoretical computations. So uh, let me uh, briefly explain the non-locality. 
So if a non-local effect exists, exist, then one may reconsider the tens tension, but uh, the non-local theories can avoid the fireworks only if the non-localities are suitably dramatic. It must be very dramatic. Then the question is, uh, how dramatic so how dramatic is sufficient? So um, how much it must be uh, um, uh, uh, dramatic? And this, this is the question. Um, so how can you implement this? And probably uh, the ERPR conjecture might be such a paradigm. So I think ERPR conjecture is the paradigm and the recent development about the, um, the quantum extremal surface and such an idea is the um, uh, technical realization of the ERPR conjecture. Um, maybe not exactly the same, but, but I think it's a very conceptually related. So uh, in this presentation, um, so I don't know very about the, the, the recent computations. So let me um, mention details about the conceptual idea of uh, this paper, Maldacena Soskin proposal, cool horizons for entangled black holes. So this is known to be ERI pair context. So um, a horizon is no more um, uh, firewall. So it's not hot, but it's cool. <laughs> but how can you make it cool by assuming the other assumptions? So uh, uh, this is a slide that came from yesterday's discussion. So based on the distillation protocol of, uh, in quantum entanglement, uh, you may say that um, before the, um, so before, by comparing before and after the page time, uh, you can find uh, for a given hooking radiation after the page time. You can uh, find excuse the, me? Yeah, excuse yes, me? Yes, yeah. yes. So before we get down to this important discussion, I'd like to mention some of the... Uh, yeah, I'd like to ask you uh, one thing. Yes. So why is the uh, 3M uh, important in the stress tensor approach? 3M ah, yeah. in the stress tensor approach. Ah, so ah, okay, 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 you okay. assume that the location of firewall right, right. is the, uh, or roughly 3M. Right. So what is the reason? Uh, so, uh, this is, so there is no definite, um, definite reason, but this is just an um, interpretation. So, um, the firewall must be located uh, where, where the hooking particles are created mm -hmm. in order to reconcile the tensions. Mm -hmm. So firewall must be located at the surface of the um, particle creation surface. But uh, in terms of uh, normalized energy momentum tensor, um, you may uh, find the surface where the negative energy flux starts. Mm -hmm. Then the negative energy flux uh, increases from zero. Uh, it's not exactly 3M, but it's about 3M. S3M is is it a uh, maximum? No, maximum? not maximum. I, I don't think so. It's the 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 so, so yeah. the incoming I, energy flux should increase, and this is the starting point of the energy. Yeah. So at, actually, at the event horizon, the influx must be uh, divergent. Actually, uh, I, I think that is uh, up to the choice of the boundary conditions. So, uh, so for example, if you yeah, choose the, the evap evaporating it, case. So uh, on, the, on the vacuum, right, 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 right. Ev evaporating case. Right. So it actually in the roughly S3M, right. so I remember the uh, outgoing flux mm. arrive, reach the maximum, mm. whereas the uh, actually influx is just a finite mm. and uh, the observer is getting closer, closer mm. event horizon. Mm. So the negative influx is uh, getting larger, get larger, right. larger. Right. Eventually, at the horizon, mm. it must be a divergent. So, uh, <clears throat> in that sense, I think that the uh, firewall should arise at the event horizon. Mm. So that is my interpretation of okay, okay, okay. location yeah. of firewall. Okay. So, um, yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, in my opinion, probably um, by choosing the unknown state, one may make the event horizon regular, but um, maybe we can discuss later about that topic. <laughs> yes, it's, it's so event horizon is regular, yeah. and uh, actually, uh, in the from the point of outgoing flux, mm. so I outgoing see, flux should vanish. In this sense, the event horizon is regular. I see. Whereas the uh, from the point of influx, mm. it should be unstable mm. because of the uh, divergent influx. Mm. So in that sense, I think that the uh, actually. Uh, Firewall should arise at the event horizon. Mm. Yeah, I that see. is my opinion. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. I, see I see. Just a comment. Yeah, I see. I see. I see. That's interesting. I see. Mm. 
Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, keep going. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Mm, and, uh, yeah, let, let me uh, continue uh, uh, to, uh, this uh, direction. So, yeah, so let, let me explain the ERDPI uh, context. On. So, so the point is that uh, this um, late time working addition is maximally integral to the, the radiation before the page time. And at the same time, this B is um, maximally integral to the incoming uh, counterpart, but uh, it is um, inconsistent in terms of the uh, monogamy of entanglement. So uh, the B cannot be maximally integral both of A and R B at the same time. So in order to resolve these um, uh, tensions between entanglements, um, uh, so Malbas and Sos can consider the, uh, a little bit different system. So in this eternal ADS black holes, now there is no notion of uh, phase time because there is no, no disappearance of complete evaporation of black holes. But uh, left side and right side of the um, uh, of, of the causal patchy are uh, maximally integrated. So um, from the Hawking radiation at this part, you can find its uh, its uh, maximally integrated pair in the left side RB uh, by the dispersion process. And at the same time, um, um, B and A must be maximally integrated. So again, in the eternal black hole case, um, again, uh, there is an incons still there is an inconsistency. But you may say that this RB and A are causally connected at, at this point. You know, so in this causal structure, um, there is einstein rosen bridge, and the incoming part can be causally connected to the, 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 the other side of the einstein rosen bridge. So uh, in principle, they can be causally connected. So um, if um, this A and R, B are somehow related by uh, some, some unknown hidden uh, conspiracy uh, of, the, of this causal patch, then uh, the problem of entanglement can be solved if A and R, B have a conspiracy uh, due to the connection of the causal structures. So this picture is very related, very closely related to the uh, two-dimensional uh, mirror case. As, uh, as, I, as I mentioned um, yesterday, uh, in the two-dimensional mirror case, uh, there is no problem of uh, the monogamy issue because um, the, the, what, the, the, uh, the incoming uh, hooking counterpart, I mean, incoming partner mode is um, uh, bounced at the horizon and it uh, goes to infinity. So um, two uh, modes are causally connected. So if uh, they are the same one, same thing, then indeed there's no um, fundamental problem. That's the point. So uh, if they are causally connected, then uh, the problem can be resolved. So then uh, this conspiracy requires a causal connection through an einstein rosen bridge. So of course, there, there is an eternal black hole and there is an einstein rosen bridge then of course you can say uh, the causal relationship between R, B, and A. But what happens about the um, generic black holes? So in the, in the gen generic black holes and evaporating black holes, you cannot say that, um, of course, um, before and after the phase time, Hawking radiations are causally uh, integrated. I mean, uh, I mean not causally, but, but uh, they are uh, maximally integrated. But um, you cannot say that the causal structure of the uh, before Hawking radiation and um, and inside the event horizon are causally connected. You cannot say usually this. But uh, um, ER repair context has said that um, in order to make ER repair consistent, uh, oh, no, 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 I, what I'm saying is um, ER EPR argues it's opposite. For a given EPR system, there always exists an einstein rosen bridge. For example, um, in this case, you know, oh, no, 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 in this case, um, um, of course, R, B, and A is not causally connected, apparently. However, if uh, for a given uh, EPR integrated pairs, uh, if there is a corresponding einstein rosen bridge, then you can move this R, B to the other side of the um, einstein rosen bridge here. And then you can make an R, B, and A uh, causally connected. And the ER repair conjecture says that uh, you can always say uh, this, um, this so uh, around the ER bridge, if our pairs are created, that is okay, but um, ER repair conductor says it's opposite thing. So for a given EPR pairs, there is a corresponding ER bridge. So through the ER bridge, uh, the causally connected, and then it is explains the, 
this provides the conspiracy and this provides the exploitation of the entanglement and so this is the basic reason why ER repair conjecture uh, can explain the, the problem of the, the entanglement and so on. So uh, then uh, now let's go more. So in order to make ER repair consistent, uh, unless there exists a causality, causality violating term set boundary, the ER bridge must not be traversable. So, you know, um, if it, uh, we, our common sense is that um, if ER entanglement, entangled pairs are um, maybe it's it entangled, but you cannot uh, transfer information from uh, one pair to the other pair. Um, so it, it is not possible, uh, which is faster than the speed of light. So of, of course, within the speed of light, you can do it, but um, the transfer of the information cannot be faster than the speed of light. Mm, mm, therefore, the, I mean, the, for the e given EPR pair, the, the corresponding dual geometry is uh, somehow the, the, the einstein rosen bridge. And if there is a um, communication between two particles, then it violates the quantum mechanical principles. So uh, the corresponding property is that ER bridge uh, must not be traversable. Uh, this is a very important uh, requirement for the consistency. So uh, here is a parenthesis that I mentioned, I mentioned that uh, there are some uh, cases that if you turn on the, the uh, uh, causality violating terms by, or some, some um, new uh, interactions between the boundaries, uh, then uh, you can make it, um, you can uh, make the, um, the, the uh, einstein rosen bridge traversable. So these um, um, examples are already known, but uh, unless you do it, um, uh, the ER bridge must not be traversable. So, uh, yeah, um, so uh, if um, maybe good researchers will uh, demonstrate this kind of examples, but uh, like me, uh, uh, very, very bad uh, researchers will uh, think an uh, opposite way. So can you make the ER bridge traversable? Can we make it, <laughs> make the ER bridge traversable? So I, I provided this uh, kind of question. So uh, this is the paper, uh, so uh, several years ago. So uh, the title was Broken Bridges. So ER bridge can be broken, and then uh, what happens? <laughs> and th this was the um, project of uh, myself and my colleagues. So uh, let me very briefly um, explain the mechanism, how to uh, break the, I mean, how to construct the, the, in, uh, the viral, I mean, the counter example of the ER repair conjecture. And, and uh, what I'm saying is that, um, uh, what I'm saying is um, my uh, assertion is not definite one. So maybe there is a loophole of my assertions, and, uh, but um, let me just um, discuss my idea, opinions. So uh, this paragraph uh, came from the original Soskin Valdez's paper. So, uh, so the, the point is um, we prepare, um, suppose that we take a large number of particles and integrate them into separable, separate bell pairs and separate them um, in the same way, uh, mini black holes then uh, collapse uh, each of them uh, to form a black hole. So the intuitively means that uh, we prepare uh, uh, two systems uh, where uh, two systems are EPR integrated. And uh, we, we bring uh, two systems to far away and make a black hole here and there. And then uh, based on the ER repair context, so two black holes are uh, causally, uh, I mean, um, connected by the einstein rosen bridge. So the idea is this. So um, um, well, this idea is um, just the following of the Soskind uh, Valdasana paper. So L and R parts are uh, maximally integrated. And I bring this L to uh, the other side. So I will bring this L to here and I will bring R to here. And then um, um, we, uh, so, uh, we prepare a pair of identical spherical shells, SL and SR. L is the left side and R is the right side and, and prepare the shell and inside the shell, uh, there is the, the, the intended particles we consider that case. So the reason why there is a shell is that uh, outside the shell, one can um, uh, travel from here to there. So, so that's the reason why uh, technically they provide the shell. So uh, we just uh, repeated the same thing. So here is the shell and there is a um, right, part, right, right part of the intended uh, and uh, this, um, there is another shell, and inside the shell, there is the left part of the intended pairs. And this L and R systems are uh, maximally intended. 
and uh, thanks to the Einstein Lusen, uh, no, no, thanks to the ERPL conjecture, after uh, LNR forms the black hole, um, there is a connection between uh, LNR. Uh, so Einstein Lusen bridge connects this L part and R part. Uh, this is due to the um, due to the um, ERPL conjecture. However, um, the only deviation from the original setting of uh, Susskind Maldasana paper is that what I considered is the dynamics of the shell. So this shell was uh, technically introduced, but um, and so there is no problem to consider the dynamics of the shell. So um, by construction, I said uh, uh, the first shell falls into the black hole and the other shell expands to infinity. So um, sufficiently largely. And then, um, you know, uh, this, if this shell collapses to the R black hole, then the, due to the incoming energy, the size of the R should increase a little bit. So size of the R should increase a little bit. Uh, but still, two black holes are connected by the einstein rosen bridge. But the einstein rosen bridge is, uh, uh, um, bridge is non traversable So you cannot send a signal between R and R directions. So it's not traversable. So, so far, so good. And up to now, there's no inconsistency compared to the, um, compared to the um, ERP uh, conjecture. However, um, if the, the, the shell collapses to the black hole, then the cosmological constant of black hole R is changed. So uh, for the green vacuum, green colored vacuum, uh, this L black hole can be eternal by choosing the proper cosmological constant, you can make this black hole uh, as an eternal one. But uh, if the cosmological constant changes, then now this black hole, R black hole, um, may not be, um, may not be the, the eternal black hole, and it can uh, um, start to evaporate. So the mass of the um, mass of the this red, uh, R black hole can decrease. Uh, so um, you can uh, evaluate more details um, by uh, using the thin shell junction equations and so on. I will skip all the mathematical details. And then you can draw the causal structure. So uh, there is a collapsing shell. And then uh, in terms of the R black hole, nothing happens. But in terms of the L black hole, um, oh, no, no, no. What is L and R? Oh, OK, OK. In terms of uh, L black hole, nothing happens. But in terms of R black holes, uh, shell collapses and vacuum energy changes. And uh, since the vacuum energy changes, uh, black hole starts to evaporate. So if the black hole evaporates, then the right side of the black hole uh, may disappear within a finite time. And then the, the bridge, I'm saying the bridge can break, can break down. So uh, by using the Bayesian approximation, we estimate where is the final position of the event horizon. And by choosing the suitable parameters, uh, even though we, uh, the, the parameter regimes are within the semi-classical limit, uh, but we can obtain this kind of causal structure. So after the shell collapses for the right black hole, uh, the apparent horizon shrinks and eventually completely evaporates. Uh, so uh, the, complete, uh, the final point can be located either here or here, but if it is located here, then uh, the true event horizon is inside the original apparent horizon. And then uh, the left, sum of left information can be transmitted to the right side. So, um, so the point is we can, uh, um, construct such an example, mm, and and uh, all the parameters are still um, uh, semi-classically uh, viable region, I think. So for this final, so this is a numerical confirmation, and the final causal structure, uh, one can send a signal uh, from left to, to right side, and this may look like uh, the counter example of the ERPL conjecture. So, so uh, this was my uh, struggle to understand and criticize the ERPL idea paradigm. And um, there, so I received uh, some messages from Maldasena himself. And uh, in, yeah, it's, this was a very, very uh, uh, important opportunity to uh, communicate with him about this paper. And uh, eventually, I think he didn't accept my idea. But uh, no, I, I, to me, it was very worthwhile and useful to listen his uh, comments about our models. So there were uh, several criticisms, but uh, the two important things are this. The first one is, um, so indeed the same idea, so, so Maldasena himself also thought the same thing. So um, uh, his own original opinion was that uh, if we change the boundary condition at in infinity, ADS boundary, 
So, um, so if one suddenly change the boundary condition from uh, reflective to absorptive uh, boundary condition, then uh, one can turn on the evaporation of the black hole, and and then you can uh, make the the, uh, the horizon shrink, then shrink, shrink. But the problem is that uh, in order to change the boundary condition, uh, you need to uh, provide some positive energy flux here. This is the green color zone. So. Um, this make, so even though there is a negative energy flux, but this incoming original incoming positive energy flux is more dominant. So therefore, eventually the, the, uh, the, this, um, um, this signal cannot be transmitted to the right side. This was this um, interpretation. But um, so my reply was that, uh, you know, uh, we eventually considered this. So, you know, this shell carries the positive energy. So we exactly computed that uh, we needed this kind of energy flux, and then uh, you can change the boundary condition. And uh, but still, in the semi-critical re regime, the opponent horizon can shrink to this point. So we already sufficiently considered the incoming energy by construction. So thanks to this detailed computation, I think uh, we could reply successively to uh, first criticism of uh, him. However, uh, there is a second criticism uh, about this. So uh, the existence of a traversal wormhole uh, requires the violation of the average null energy condition. So, you know, in this codal structure, I think uh, the average the null energy condition must be violated. However, there is a proof, um, so based on this paper, uh, there is a proof uh, such that the average null energy condition is uh, true for a very uh, generic uh, models, very very natural and generic and consistent models. The uh, average null energy condition must be satisfied, and then there must be no uh, traversal wormhole within the, the semi-classical regime. So when I wrote uh, this paper, when I wrote this paper, uh, this paper was uh, 2016. Uh, I didn't know about this paper. So I didn't know about this proof so because this was published in 2017. So at that time, I didn't know and noticed uh, about this paper. But later, I, I, I understand uh, there is a proof. Um, now, um, um, frankly, I don't know what's wrong with this. <laughs> so I, I mean, um, um, I am not sure about this. Uh, uh, so th it's fairly true that there is a proof such that the average knowledge condition must be preserved. Um, and uh, also, uh, my construction is very semi-classical. So uh, I'm not sure how can you reconcile the, the tension between two assertions, but uh, maybe my interpretation is something like this. Uh, the essential point was that uh, we introduced a bubble, which is manifestly non-perturbative. So uh, such a bubble must be created from uh, non-perturbative tunneling. But usually such a process is highly uh, suppressed in terms of the probability. Mm. So uh, when you evaluate the, the energy momentum tensor, so, so I mean, the, 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 their proof is related to the expectation value of the operators. So the um, um, average normal energy condition of this um, expectation value is not um, uh, violated. Uh, but um, if some effects are non-perturbative, then such effect may be ignored uh, as you, you average over all contributions. And, uh, and then maybe the reason why, um, uh, so, so there is a proof of the average null energy condition, but still uh, non-perturbatively such a, um, a process is possible. So this is my um, interpretation, uh, but um, uh, still I don't have a, a very rigorous explanation about uh, the tension between the proof and uh, my, my um, counter examples. So, um, so in, in uh, the paper with Tom Page, we considered what we considered is the, the emission of uh, some non adiabatic um, processes, which is also non perturbative. So, in the average energy, average energy momentum tensor, it, it must be um, ignored, but um, uh, what we, uh, we uh, included um, uh, here, so it must be uh, physically allowed. If there is such a non perturbative or non adiabatic fluctuation, again, uh, maybe the, the, the space time can be uh, causally connected between left and right side. So, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm sorry that I, I uh, uh, talk uh, more than the, my time limitation. So, let me, uh, I will very quickly finish. 
So uh, I think the year repair contractor may be consistent up to the semi-classical limit, but uh, if we include the non-perturbative effect, uh, which might be ignored by minimalized management from tensor, then the conjecture may be violated. So the conjecture must be refined if the conjecture is the generic principle to explain the information loss paradox. And um, um, this is my just an, uh, opinion, and this is my prejudice. Um, and so uh, if you uh, have a better idea, then um, please uh, um, yeah, um, have that idea. And the first uh, possibility is the black hole and picture, but uh, I will not discuss today and let me postpone tomorrow's discussion. So first possibility is the uh, remnant picture. And the fifth, fifth possibility is the effective loss idea. If there is no semi correct observer who can read the information, then information must be effectively lost although the entire wave function is unitary. However, if you say it this way, then uh, this possibility needs more constructive explanation. But uh, due to the time, I cannot explain the details, but uh, I prepared several slides, but uh, I think the Euclidean passive integral approach may explain um, such a possibility. So maybe you, one can uh, provide the, the idea of the effective loss of information, uh, but this is not the major opinion of the community, I'm sure. And <laughs> this is only my private opinion. So if you are interested in my idea, then please uh, see this paper and um, several other papers. Uh, later, maybe I will uh, upload this uh, slide in some place. Then uh, from the slide, please find the references and uh, read my papers and criticize them. <laughs> then then, um, then maybe um, uh, it will be a very, very uh, nice um, outcome. So uh, today uh, I discussed uh, several debating about this and that ideas, and um, I gave many comments from my private opinions. And tomorrow um, I will um, discuss several uh, other alternative ideas. The most important thing is the remnant picture. Uh, the second idea is the bubble universe, baby universe or bubble universe creation idea. And the third one is the uh, singularity resolution issue. Because up to now, we have uh, focused on the entanglement of working radiation, but um, maybe in terms of quantum gravity, we need to resolve the singularity eventually. So then how can you resolve uh, the singularity? And so in the market, in the theory market, um, how many models are there? And we may uh, discuss about that. So um, uh, tomorrow I will discuss such a very diverse um, related topics, uh, and then maybe um, we will complete this series of lectures. So today, uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for very interesting uh, lectures. Uh, please ask any questions. I, I would like to uh, have a comment oh. on this average uh, the energy condition. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear uh, uh, clearly. Uh, well, I would like to have a comment on uh, this average the null energy condition. Ah, yes, please. Uh, well, strictly speaking, uh, the, uh, it should be uh, a kronal. Uh, average the null energy condition. Mm. Uh, so, uh, well, in, in, in that, in that uh, uh, achronal average the null energy, energy, energy condition uh, should be uh, respected. And uh, I, I think your semi classical model mm. is uh, consistent with the uh, achronal. Uh, Average the null energy condition. I, oh, I see. So it is uh, not. It, it does not violate any uh, energy condition in, in that sense. Oh, I see. Oh, thank you very much. It's, it's very interesting.
So for instance, I mean, uh, the, 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 the famous example is uh, uh, one plus one di uh, dimensional uh, CFT on a cylinder, mm -hmm. uh, where we know that uh, uh, average the null, null, null energy condition is violated there mm -hmm. uh, uh, by uh, the ground state, mm -hmm. for instance. But uh, uh, since uh, the uh, well, ground state uh, energy is negative there, uh, and and also uh, uh, all, also the, the the pressure component uh, is negative, and and so average null energy condition, simple uh, average null energy condition is violated there. But a chronal uh, average the null energy null energy condition is not violated. I see. Uh, and so that is uh, the, the one simple example. Uh, mm. Of course, I mean, uh, the, nothing wrong with the uh, CFT uh, mm. on a cylinder. And so mm. uh, we are sure about uh, that uh, in some sense. But with the gravity, uh, there is no proof. But uh, people believe that uh, even in the presence of gravity, uh, a chronal null energy, uh, average the null energy condition uh, uh, can be uh, respected. Uh, th that is uh, what people believe. Mm -hmm. So other comments or question? Uh, I have one question. So, so far, this old, whole discussion is almost uh, uh, classical sure, isn't it? Or, right. So, how far is it valid usually? Like, a, no, I'm, I'm sorry, like I'm a, sorry. How far is it oh. val valid? Like a quantum gravity effect? Uh, I mean, here I guess the uh, whole like a quantum gravity effect is uh, you know because it's uh, very difficult we end up we don't know how to do that mm -hmm. but uh, on in you talk about a lot of like uh, cases but uh, uh, do usually do people consider like uh, how far their calculation is valid or mm -hmm. uh, so I think that, that is very <laughs> difficult question because <laughs> we don't have a, the, a, a generic picture of a quantum gravity. But but uh, I think it, um, it's uh, different case by case. For example, uh, if you um, consider the quantum uh, gravity effect, uh, including, for example, the replica tricks uh, contributions, then this covers uh, even uh, outside the black holes and maybe the locality is um, a little bit changed and maybe the corresponding semi clear geometry becomes very subtle and unclear. Mm -hmm. However, if you are saying the uh, quantum gravity effect only near the singularity in, in, based on very conservative interpretation, uh, then um, so, so semi critical description must be um, consistent, I think. So uh, I, I don't know whether it's, it's a suitable reply to you or not, but um, yeah. Okay. Nice, okay, thank you. So uh, any other question? Uh, Professor Yang? Mm. Uh, yes. What is your, okay opinion for a firewall ah so i, I think uh, <laughs> i think uh, that, believe uh, or not uh, i don't think there is a firewall mm. yeah so, so, so in my opinion, so if you are asking just my opinion then i think that there, there's no uh, physical uh, firewall really uh -huh. so maybe my preferred opinion is uh, something like this maybe um, information it must be preserved but we practically uh, lose by some um, quantum uh, gravitational uh, ways. Um, mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, can you, is there some recent like a progress in firewall? 
like uh, there's some paper on it, not the disapproval of the firewall, but there's some like a support of the firewall. So I don't think so because you know the firewall proposal was introduced by Arimeri Manu Putin Singh but nowadays all of them are um, focusing yes. on <laughs> that issue. So so maybe not many people. Uh, but one, one interesting comment is that uh, recently there was a gravitational uh, no I mean uh, gravitational wave observations and there was an idea of uh, um, gravity I mean I mean gravit gravitational wave echoes. So maybe the echoes can be detected and it's something about the membrane. So one can probe the membrane near the black holes. But um, I, um, I think still it's, a, it's a not a very conclusive. There is no evidence. But in principle, there is a way to probe the, the membrane. If there is a membrane, then, then in principle, there is some way to probe um, using gravitational waves. Oh, is there some way to understand, I mean, distinguish a firewall or some other, like, uh, I don't know, some other object uh, from the observation? Like, uh, as you said, uh, you uh, like gravitational echo. Uh, uh, so, uh, from the gravitational echo, uh, you may say that there is a something at the horizon. Uh, but yeah. of course, so we don't know what is the exact mechanism to generate firewalls. So, <laughs> so it's maybe very difficult to distinguish what is firewall and what is stretched horizon, what is the deep brain and so on. So the best way is to fall into the black hole, but <laughs> maybe it's that easy, I think. Oh, actually, it's very strange. If we suppose that the quantum mechanics is right, then uh, if we will use the uh, conventional semi-classical quantum field theory, mm. so it would be, uh, uh, we have to, we can uh, derive the, uh, obtain the uh, firewall actually. Mm. So uh, why does, why did people do, yeah, derive this firewall by, use, by using the semi-classical quantum field theory? Okay. It's strange. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so uh, if I uh, say uh, my, my generic feeling, then um, mm. people think that the semi-classical effects are quite small. So, so it is not sufficient to cause such a firewall unless we introduce the, the uh, unknown, some quantum gravitation effects. But th that is just my uh, feeling about that. It's very strange. So I think that the actually uh, fi uh, firewall mm. has something to do with the uh, divergent torment temperature. Mm. Because the uh, actually, uh, uh, what people to say is the uh, torment temperature can be defined in the, uh, in the accelerating frame, but this is not true. Actually, uh, in free fall frame, mm. if one calculate the temperature, that is nothing but the torment temperature. Mm. So uh, in free fall frame, one can calculate the temperature mm. by using the stress tensor. Mm. Then uh, we can get the uh, divergent quantity at the event horizon. Mm. So in this sense, I think that the uh, event horizon, so divergent behavior of firewall has mm. some, some, something to do with the uh, actually divergent torment temperature. Mm. Yeah. So actually, uh, I remember Israel mm. uh, so that the uh, fire phenomena as related to a Bovell state. Mm. So negative operation of negative energy state into the, into the, into the uh, event horizon. Mm. So it causes the uh, divergence. So mm. he, I think he believed that the, uh, there's no entanglement, just the uh, uh, fire phenomena as related to a uh, uh, Bovell accretion. Mm. So in the unknown state. Mm. So simply speaking, I think that the, uh, Negative, negative influx causes the uh, divergent temperature. Mm. Yeah, so that is, I think, the uh, related to a uh, firewall phenomena. So it's it, it's interesting to note that uh, in spite of the negative influx at the horizon, mm. it gives rise to uh, it gives rise to positive positive temperature, positive mm. infinite temperature. That's mm. very interesting. Mm. So negative flux is ingoing then it, it, it contributes to the positive temperature. Mm. Uh, 
in the in gravitational combination. Okay, so uh, in the outgoing, uh, actually at the horizon, if we take the uh, unknown state, there is no outgoing particle at the event horizon, as you know. So uh, actually, at uh, outgoing particles are every finite. So it means that the uh, outgoing temperature will be finite everywhere, any place. So it picks the uh, S3M and uh, it approaches to uh, Hawking temperature at the event horizon. So in that sense, I think that the uh, actually uh, negative influx is related to a fire phenomenon, I think. That's uh, my uh, opinion, just mm. comment. Mm. <clears throat> Okay, any other comments or question? Yeah, if not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much.